Thank you. Um, so my name's Paul Kent. I'm from SAS, and uh, wow, those are some really great keynotes. I feel completely humbled and humiliated here to try and follow on with that. Um, SAS is a 40-year-old, privately held, commercial, ugly, nasty, not open source business. Most of you would agree with that, right? This is the open crowd. And my job is to try and convince at least some of you that we're not that ugly, we're not that evil. We are more open than you might think. Open, what does that mean? I like to say inclusive. I want to meet you where you live. I don't want you to come over here, do it my way. I want to do your data. I don't want you to bring your data to my proprietary format. I want to do it in your location. I don't want to make you bring your work to my server. I want to do it in your language. I don't want to force you to learn my language. So that's casting what I mean by open. And you may see some of the publicity this year about our fourth generation of SaaS software. We call it SaaS Via, and it's our fourth time to every 10, 15 years, we reinvent completely how our software has been done. And that's one of the advantages of being a private company. Our big boss says, you know, we're going to do it. It's hard, but I pay you guys, and that's what we're going to do. And this is the fourth time in uh, my tenure at SAS that we've uh, done this. And it changes a lot of things about what SAS can be for our mutual customers. Open data is kind of table stakes. You have to read every crazy database known to man. You have to read schema-free and schema-flexible and schema-just-in-time and comma-separated files, the universal transfer format. You have to read it from S3 and HTFS and clouds. This is table stakes, guys. Everybody has to produce and consume all of the file formats. And we need to get better at it because we waste so much humanity just slicing and dicing data from this format to that format. Open location is a different story. You, most of you, still 93% of you, according to Mike Olson, and 95% according to Mark Hurd, do your computing on-premise. But quite a few of you have catched on to this new idea in the cloud, and people are moving. They're trying to decide which is on-premise, which is on cloud. And a lot of you have discovered this magical thing called Docker, which allows you to containerize and isolate each application from each other. And so one of the expressions of open from SAS is we're happy to run in all of these locations and configurations. So I feel like I've scored two points on that we're a bit more open than you might have thought. Open data, open location. And the last one on my uh, thing is open language. And you've seen these raging in the Stack Exchange thing, Python or R or SAS. That's bullshit, guys. We really should be talking about Python and R and SAS. And I'd like to show you a little demo, if it works. Um, of the progress we've made in, in that way. So let's cut over to the demo here. Jupyter is an open project, open uh, notebook. It's very popular for type a bit of code in, run it immediately, and uh, if you've got it right, good, move on to the next thing. Otherwise, try again. And so we've implemented a kernel for Jupyter at SAS. It's on GitHub. It is open source. You can download it and even modify it and make improvements and suggest them back to us. Um, but this is the integration of our language into your environment. Not all of you use Jupyter Notebook, but many of you data scientist folks use a tool like this. But come on, Paul, this is like lipstick on a pig. This really isn't SAS being open. The thing I really am proud to show you guys today, and uh, what I think is a breakthrough, is uh, this example here, a second notebook. Uh, this isn't SAS at all. I'm importing some open source projects, Pandas and NumPy, and uh, the plotting from Matplotlib. Um, I am connecting to my server, a SAS CAS server, which is just like a Spark context, if you're familiar with Spark. It's a connection to a server that's not actually in this Python process. And uh, so that I don't challenge the demo gods too hard, I commented out that go and read it from S3, and I'm just fetching these data sets uh, from locally. They're the um, Kaggle competition about the Titanic, who lived and who died on the Titanic disaster, and can we build a predictive model to classify your chances? Were you lucky or were you unlucky uh, on the, on the um, Titanic? Now, you know, most people, when they start, they want to know what's in their data, so a little. Now, what's cool here is this dtrain.fetch. That dtrain, you already know it. That's a pandas data frame. Well, it's actually a SAS CAS table, but they're exactly the same. Their object hierarchy and their methods and the way they behave has been designed to be as similar as possible. So I'm back to my thesis that I've come where you live. 
I've brought SaaS ideas and made them compatible with the ideas in the open source community. Um, after you print your data, you usually get a summary of it because everybody knows there's dirty data and how many unique values of passionate IG. Well, there's about 800 in this. The capital competition was 800 where, you knew, where it gave you the labels, lived or died, and 400 where you had to score them later to, to uh, show how good your model was. Um, so here's something, and I'm probably going to get fired for this because I'm doing a plot, but I'm not doing it with SAS. I'm doing it partly with SAS, this cross tab, is one of our methods. Anybody who knows SAS probably ever ran ProcFreak to uh, do a cross tab. But it's now a method in the hierarchy of all the objects of all the libraries you can use in SAS. In fact, all of the methods in SAS are available as objects in the uh, pandas in the Python workspace here. So I did a cross tab on that data, and I ran it through matplotlib. Not the best graphics package, perhaps. There's way cooler ones. But here you can see, if you were a lady, you had about a Two ladies lived till one lady died. If you're a man, much worse chances. So well job to the gentlemen. They all stood back and let the ladies load up on the life rafts on the Titanic, at least in this subset of the data. Um, I'll skip over this one, because I don't want to run out of time. Well, I already did. Um, I'm adding a petition ID. I'm running a little bit of SAS data step in parallel on every thread, on every server in this massively distributed uh, uh, system. People thought that couldn't be done, and we finally paralyzed the, the data step across all of your data. And here I'm uh, training a model. It's a decision tree. Um, uh, the, the, the most interesting thing is what are the two top uh, information contributors in that data set to uh, the outcome, whether you lived or you died. So your sex was 83% uh, of the importance. The P class is the class. Were you a first class passenger, a second class passenger, or a steerage passenger? That was the second most contributor to whether you uh, lived or died. And um, I'm going to leave it at that. Uh, perhaps we can go back to the last slide, or oh, they already did. Uh, open. I really hope that I've made a case with you about that. Uh, if you'd like a cool T-shirt like mine, I, I uh, uh, evaded the, shirt, the suit police this morning. Um, go by our booth in the demo there and express your opinion. There, the SAS is more open than it used to be or than you thought about it. And if you say, yes, we are, then maybe you'll get a T-shirt. They have warned me that supplies are limited. But thank you very much.